Hello, my name is Dr. Lizzie Burns, and I'm very much looking forward to contributing to your science festival. So I'm going to be sharing with you some origami, paper folding, paper engineering. And um, I've my mind, I have to say, was really opened by somebody who I met, Huen Ha, who is with me now. And I met um, Huen Ha at the British Origami Society. And I was I was really amazed and um, and inspired to meet because um, Yuen Ha has visual impairments and she does origami. And it suddenly made me think about origami in a whole different way. It's all about structure and form. And I thought it would be really, it would be hopefully really inspiring for you to also meet Yuen Ha. So, um, hello. Hello. <laughs> to see you. hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for being willing to share your, your experiences and for letting me ask a few questions. So I wonder, how did you come to learn origami? Um, when I was 10, I was in, on a family holiday in Hong Kong and my uncle um, taught me to fold a few things. And at that time, I didn't actually know that there was a thing called origami. All I knew was that he showed me how to fold things, which I thought was very clever. And then, that was it um, for decades, really. I didn't really know that it existed as anything else, as a proper thing. And then um, when I met Ricky, um, he um, said he was a member of the British Origami Society. And I thought, oh, OK. Um, and, and then we started dating. And, oh. um, and on the first date, he brought some of his origami along. And I think we did some folding as well at lunch that day. And that then got me into it in a, in a big way. Wow, that's so lovely. Because oh, <laughs> it is, it's something that's passed on from one person to another, isn't it? So from your grandfather there and then with Ricky as well, and that you're, you're sharing that. That's so beautiful. Mm. Um, have you got so how long has it been that you've been doing it as an adult origami how um, probably about 11 years now I guess amazing yeah so I've been going to the British origami conventions um ever since and to the local meetups as well for the um origami folds Brilliant. So there's a whole community, isn't there, of people yeah. involved? Yeah. yeah, they're really nice, really good. Really and what would, be, what would be your top tips for origami with, you know, with a visual impairment? I guess it's, you know, have you got any thoughts at all how you can? Ooh, OK. Um, any tips? On folding or on getting started? Um, I think it's probably easier if you get started when you're with somebody who can show you certain things to be honest which is difficult in this pandemic I know um it can you can still do it now but it, it, things are a lot easier when you've got when you're starting off as with any activity um physical activity if you've got somebody to sit there and show you because once you get to know some of the the basics and the terminology and and stuff like that then um, you can start watching videos on your own. And even if the videos aren't as clear as say a person sitting next to you, because you've got some experience already, you can kind of, you know, assume or work out what they, they might mean. Um, but um, I, I would say that if, um, if you really get into it, um, I mean, I, I like folding quite, quite complex things. And people often say, oh, no, that's too complex, blah, blah, blah. I would say my tip is don't listen to that. Yes, it may be yes. complex. But <laughs> if you like something, that will be your motivation for mm. keeping with it and finding it not so difficult. Mm. Um, there are um, ways that I fold things that a sighted person wouldn't because I just find it easier to feel certain types of creases um so I'll often do it one way 
and then reverse it, to, um, which is not how a sighted person would do it. So they would might often think I'm doing it wrong or doing it backwards. Um, but that that sort of thing, it's probably easier for me to explain once somebody knows a bit about origami. I'm not sure how much people know here. Yeah. So much detail but if when people get a bit more into it they want to know some more ways that I use to make things easier for myself um you can um we we, we can do another thing brilliant or, or something like that well that's that's really useful to get started with somebody else and yeah and that you would adapt follow your passion and your interest I want I'm really curious as well um this is something I've noticed in myself but how how does origami make you feel how is it helpful to you in your life <laughs> oh lot, lots of different ways really I I like it because um it's tactile so you can feel it so often when you look at art or you go to an art exhibition, you're not allowed to touch anything. Um, well, not that a painting is very touchable, but even with, with other forms, you're not allowed to touch it. Whereas in most origami things I've been to, you're allowed to pick it up and look at it so you can really feel engaged. Um, I also like it, the aesthetics of, of things. I, I like making things that look like the real world thing. Um, and I find that a it can show me what something looks like in real life when I've um, not seen one before, which is really helpful. And also, secondly, um, that it's um, aesthetically pleasing, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and also being an engineer, I'm, I'm quite fascinated by how you can turn a flat piece of paper into such a complex 3D model. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you, you know, some of the things are, oh, well, many, many things you look at and they're really complex. And the fact that you can get that from a, just a flat piece of paper, I find fascinating. As I say, paper engineering, it, it appeals to my engineering mind. So both aesthetic and engineering. It's also very portable, actually, pieces of paper. I always have with me when I go out, because I hate being bored, <laughs> a pack of paper and some knitting. So if I'm stuck anywhere, I've got something to do. Mm. Um, something to, I, I, I hate being stuck somewhere with nothing to do. Um, <laughs> And actually, paper you could probably find anywhere with a ticket or a magazine. Yeah, or yeah. anything. Yeah. yeah. I, often, I often do it in meetings as well at work under the table or, <laughs> or not. I love that. <laughs> it's kind of quite boring. Some meetings are really, really boring. Yeah. And you can just sit and fold. Yeah. It, as long as you don't rustle too much, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> actually, most, yeah, I guess in a meeting, if I was a little bit bored, I would start looking at all sorts of things. And I guess you're needing that that engagement and you're doing it a different way through feeling. Yeah, yeah I, either, I either knit or I fold. <laughs> and they've got used to me now at work doing that as long as I don't rustle. <laughs> <laughs> so I wonder as well, just lastly, whether you could, whether you could show, show us some of the folds that you've done, because I have to say they're incredible. And you've, okay. you've also designed your own pieces. Yeah, I, I don't it's often amazing. design, in fact, I very, very, very rarely design things. I, I yeah. more fold other people's things. Yeah. But I did design this by- Oh, wow. Accident. So this is a- swan with yep. a little signet in its oh. I don't know if you can see that a little signet yeah. um in its Amazing. back and that's all one piece of paper one piece of paper um, yeah and that was I was kind of inspired by I was somebody showed me how to fold a duck with its baby all out of one piece and I wow. thought I wonder if you could do a swan um because I'm quite I like quite like the shape of swans and so I fiddled about with it for I don't know weeks and weeks and weeks oh. and eventually came out with with this and then I've kind of made variations I've done them on cards and boxes and things like that so that's stunning it looks so textured and sculptural it is. It really is. It beautiful feels good. wow um, I can hear it too <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that's that one. Oh, brilliant um yeah. this one um this is not my so none of these others are my model to say yeah. I, I just tend to fold other people so this is a jack-in-the-box oh can you hold it up a bit yeah hold on i'm just putting oh it you're trying to get it 
I'm trying to get him back into the way into its okay. box. So this is make... made out of a piece, one piece of paper that wow. is twice as long as it is wide. Okay. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. So this is the box. Yes. And I'm gonna. He's gonna jump out now. I'm gonna. Okay. Leave the window. One, two, three. Ready. Yeah, so oh. be... <laughs> and Fantastic. I, I think I saw this at the first origami convention. I mean, and I just thought that is just so clever. Really, <laughs> really clever, all out of one piece of paper. So oh, a little jumping this, this is quite good for doing when you're in a queue because it takes quite a long time to do. So when you're queuing at something like um a theme park for a ride. Yes. <laughs> one day. <laughs> um Thank you. And, and one more. Okay. And then I've got this rose. Oops. Gosh. Um, Stunning. It's quite, quite complex. Um, and I don't know that I know how to do the bottom of it or finish it off. I can't remember that properly now. Um, but um, we saw this in Hungary. So they have these origami meetings all over the world. You can go to yeah. everybody else's. And it's a more complicated version of the Kawasaki rose, but more patterned. Oh. And I just, I just love the feel. Again, yes, because it just, I guess it kind of reminds me of what a real rose would feel like in terms yeah. of shape and, and things like that. But obviously, won't die. Yeah, um, <laughs> I, just, I just really like, I just really like the shape and, oh. and, and feel of that. Yeah. It's stunning. Thank you so much for sharing those. And we really hope that you'll, yeah, will join me with some films. Yuen Ha has been trying to give me some tips on describing. So I'll do my best and hopefully get you started on your origami journey. Thanks ever so much, Yuen Ha. Okay. Um, thank you.